Hello guys, welcome to another video of strength of materials discussion. So in this video, we will talk about bearing stress. So in actually loaded structure, we have different type of stresses. We have normal stress, we have shear stress, and we have bearing stress. So I made a, a video for normal stress and shear stress. You can uh, watch it here in my channel. Okay, so let's now um, discuss on the concept of bearing stress. Okay, bearing stress, by the way, it is a, a stress occurs on the surface of contact between two interactors. Like for example, in this bar, as what we can see here, the, the bolt, or let's say it's a rivet, is in contact with the um, bar, correct, or the plate. So in that case, at this point here, at this surface here, uh, there is bearing stress. So the formula for bearing stress is the same as with the formula for normal stress. We have the bearing stress is equal to the actual, the internal actual force over the bearing area. Okay, the bearing area is the surface or the area in which the two uh, members are in contact. Okay, so let's try to solve example. So I have here example number one. A steel pipe column, so this column here, having a diameter of 175 mm, this is outside diameter, okay? So if this is the cross-section of the column, so our diameter, outside diameter, is from this point to the bottom, okay? That is 175 and having a wall thickness of 6.5 mm, so therefore this one is um, 6.5 millimeter, and also this one is 6.5 millimeter. And this column supports or carries a load of 54 kilonewton. This one, the steel pipe column rests on a square steel base, so our column lies above the steel plate which in turn rests on a concrete slab. So we have concrete slab where our steel plate and the column lies. Now, we have to compute the bearing stress in the base plate. Since we have compressive force in the column, so therefore, we have stress at the area of contact between the column and the steel plate. Okay? Now, the area of contact here is this area lang. Okay, kanilang atong area of contract, knowing that this is what? Hollow. Okay, again, when we say bearing stress, that is the stress or the pressure due to the contact of two member or two materials. Okay, so in this case, we have material, column, and then we have the base plate material. So they are two different material. So due to the compressive load, then we, uh, there is a bearing or there is a bearing stress or pressure at the point or at the surface of contact. Okay? So we have um, to compute the bearing stress. In this case, we use the formula for bearing stress. Again, bearing stress formula is the same as with the formula of normal stress. So bearing stress is the, the P over the or it is the load over the bearing area. So therefore, our bearing stress here is equal to our P or the load here that is 54,000 Newton over the bearing area. So since our area it is only this one, so we compute the area of the uh, greater circle, then we um, deduct the area of the smaller circle. So we have the area effective or the area bearing that is just um, the area of the greater circle, pi 4, then we use the outside diameter, then minus the area of the smaller circle, then we use the inside diameter. But in this case, the inside diameter is equivalent to, that is 175 minus the wall thickness, correct? Now we have twice the wall thickness since we have this one and this one. Okay, 
the inside diameter is 162 mm. Okay, so we can now compute the area, area bearing. Or we can just uh, simply say that our area bearing here is equal to pi over 4 times the outside diameter we have 175 squared, okay, minus the area of the inside circle that is the diameter is 162 squared. So our bearing stress is equal to equals to 15.69. Since our numerator is in Newton and our denominator is in square millimeter, then we have the unit mega pascal. Okay? Again, mega pascal that is just is equal to Newton per square millimeter. So this is now the bearing stress um, in the steel plate due to the contact between the steel column and the plate itself. Okay, we have example number two. In the figure, assume that a 20 mm diameter rivet joins the plate that are each 110 mm wide. The allowable stresses are 120 MPa for the bearing in the plate material and 60 MPa for shearing of rivet. The first question is compute the thickness of each plate and the largest average tensile stress in the plate. Okay, so since we have a rivet here, this rivet, it combines um, two plates, this one, and this plate has a width of 110 mm diameter and the rivet has a width of 20 mm diameter. Okay, so our goal here is to compute the thickness of the plate. So in that case, we use the bearing stress formula that is the bearing stress is equal to P over A. Now, we have bearing stress, which is 120 MPA. Then the P, we don't have the value of P, correct? How about the A, the area, the bearing area? So if we cut the plate no, in this section, okay, what we see is A is a rectangular. Now, the bearing area is the rectangular projection of the surface in which our rivet and the plate is in contact. So in this case, this is the area of projection. No? Okay. Now, this one here is the diameter of rivet. Okay. And this one here is the thickness. So therefore, our bearing area here is equal to what? That is the diameter times the thickness. Okay. So, we have area, diameter of the rivet times the thickness. However, we don't have the value of P here. So we can compute the value of P by using the shearing stress or the given shearing stress. So from the formula, that is the shearing stress is equal to V over the A. This is the shearing stress of the bolt, okay? Now, our shearing stress of the bolt or the rivet is equal to 60 MPa. And that equals to, so since it is single shear, we have only one shear area. So we have V alone over the A. That is the area of the rivet. And the area of the rivet, that is cross-sectional area of the rivet, is pi. We have the diameter of the rivet, that is what? Um, 20. So we have 20 squared over 4. Okay? So we have the value of the shear, the internal shear equals to... 18,849.56 Newton. Now take note if we have internal shear acting to the right or to the left rather, then we have equal um, force P acting to the left. So if we sum up forces horizontal, then we know that P here is equal to V. Okay? So therefore, our P is equal to 
849.56 Newton. Then we can use this value to compute for the bearing stress. So we have the bearing stress is equal to 18,849.56 Newton over the bearing area that is diameter times the thickness, this one, the rectangular projection of the contact between the rivet and the plate. Or that is the diameter times the thickness in which our diameter there is equivalent to 20. Then the thickness is unknown, correct? Now, since our bearing stress is equal to sorry, 120 MPa, then we equate this equation into 120. Okay, so we have the value of T that is equal to, now take note 120 has a value of Newton per square millimeter. Okay, that's in MPa. And this equation gives us a value of thickness of 7.854 millimeter. Okay, so this is the required thickness. Now let's compute um, question letter B. We have the largest average tensile stress in the plate. Okay? So when we say tensile stress, that is normal stress. And we know that the normal stress is force over the perpendicular area. Tama? Or that is normal stress equal to P over the perpendicular area. So if you are not yet familiar with normal stress, then you can watch the video that I made. Okay, you can visit it. You can watch it through my channel. Okay, so we have the stress here. Now take note, when we um, talk about the largest average tensile stress, so we have different type of failure now in this plate. So our plate could crack like this or pwedeng plate natin is dito dadaan sa hole. Now take note, kung ano yung mas lesser ang cross-sectional area, that is the prone to failure. Okay? So in this case, Ito yung prone to failure, this side, or this uh, area here. Why? It's because meron tayong hollow. Okay? May butas. So, the hole here decre decreases the cross-sectional area. So, therefore, mas prone ito sa cracking or sa failure. So, to compute for the safer tensile force, so we should use the area in this cross-section. So, the possible failure is this one. So if you try to notice, this is the cross-section. Let's say this, this cross-section here, this one. So we have hollow. Okay? So therefore, in that case, our tensile area is equal to what? It is, since this one is the thickness, okay? And this one is the width. Now take note, our area here that is just the thickness times the area or the tensile area. So we have to um, deduct the diameter, okay? So we should not consider this length here. So that is just the width minus the diameter, okay? So our area is equal to the thickness. We have um, the thickness of the plate that is unknown and the width of the plate is 110 minus the diameter of the rivet, that is 20. Okay, so let's use the this equation, or substitute this equation to our normal stress formula. Okay, so we have normal stress, or tensile stress equal to P. Our P here is, now from, from our previous answer, our P is 18,000. 849.56 okay over the area since we have already computed for the value of the thickness and we have thickness equivalent to 7.85 so we have already computed this one times 110 minus 20 so we have tensile stress is equal to 26.67 Since this one is in Newton, 
and this one is in m, m squared then we have unit of m p a so this is now your average or the largest average tensile stress in the plate